Good morning. Today in math, we are going to do a problem string. So it's just easier to have you watch the video. You can pause it as you go. So get your math notebooks ready and set up your problem this way. So your problem is going to be on the left in the margin. Then you're going to write the strategy. Today we're going to be working on ratio tables. So comparing things, this is like a way to do multiplication. It's a ratio table. So our problem for today is two times eight. And we're gonna, again, talk about the baseballs that we were working on, Brad's baseballs. So if you have a set of baseballs and one of them costs $8, we're gonna set it up a ratio table to figure out how much two would be. So if one is $8, then you would put the two here and you are doing, hopefully you're seeing that you're doubling what you have. So your answer would be 16. So give me a minute to write that down in your notebook or pause the video. So we notice that one times two is two and eight times two is 16. So it's just getting bigger. It's doubling. You're multiplying by two. So if our next problem is four times eight, we would set it up the same way. So we have the same ratio table. Let's go ahead and write that in your notebooks while I'm doing it as well. my lines. So I have one baseball is eight dollars. Two baseballs would be sixteen dollars. And what's going to happen with four baseballs? Again, if I'm doubling each one times two, what's the relationship here? Should it be thirty? Two. 16 times 2 is 32. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. Now I can continue. What if I want 8 baseballs times 8? And I want to show it in a ratio table. Instead of drawing it all over again here, I'm just going to do it up here if that's okay. Because it's a little hard to do on this whiteboard. So if I were to continue, four times two is eight. Then I know that 32 times two is going to be 64. So if you notice in a ratio table, there's always a relationship between the top number and the bottom. So even though we're multiplying by two, when we go this way to get our answers, we can always look at the top and the bottom. So what do you notice between the one and the eight and the two and the 16 and the four and the 32 and the eight and the 64? Everything in the top row, we're multiplying by eight. So one times eight is eight. 2 times 8 is 16, 4 times 8 is 32, and 8 times 8 is 64. Now using this strategy, we want to try something different. If I know that 10 times 8 I already know my answer is 8, right? If I were to show it in two different ways, I could show it as eight times eight and I'm gonna put my parentheses around it. I'm gonna try and do a better job with my parentheses. I can take my two different ratio tables that I did already. Now you might think, well, this is kind of silly to do when I already know that 10 times eight. 
but I'm showing you with just something that you can understand because when we get into bigger numbers, we're multiplying something times 54 or 27, you would wanna use this type of strategy. So I know that if I add these two together, I'm going to get the same answer. Now, another strategy is to take nine times eight. Remember we did double and half? Well, this strategy is to go up to the tens that we already know. And again, this takes me some time, so it's probably the same amount of time that you're writing it in your notebook. So we're doing it this at the same speed. So you should be writing all this down as well, or pausing the video. So you have a whole problem string in your book to look back on. Nine times eight is gonna be the same thing as kind of bumping up to 10 times eight, but then we're gonna take one of those away. So it's one way to figure out how to multiply times nine. You can always say 10 times eight and then take one of those sets of eight away. So it looks like 10 times eight is 80. And then you're gonna take away one group of eight to get your answer of 72. And again, when we know our math facts, why would we do all this? We wouldn't. We would just know that nine times eight is 72. But when we have larger multiplication problems, it's gonna be much easier to try this strategy to go to a clean number that we can do a 10 times eight. Let me just add that zero to the end and take away one of our groups. And that's how you do a ratio table. Let's practice one more. Now we'll do it with a larger number. Let's do two times 27. So I'm gonna set up my table. So I know one is 27. So let's pretend we're selling Brad's baseballs and he's gonna sell two containers and they're $27 each. So one is $27. Again, now we're just doubling what we did earlier. We're going to get 54. If we we're going to do four, sets of baseballs for $27. One times two is two, two times two is four. So we're gonna take 54 times two. We're gonna get 108. So again, using larger numbers to solve our problems. All right, so for the rest of your math time, you're gonna go into your student book. I'll put that on the board here. And you're going to find the Bridges student book. Page. Fifteen and sixteen. You find your student book, Bridges, page 15 and 16. It says pricing Brad's baseballs on one side, page one of two, and pricing Brad's baseballs, page two of two. I'm going to do these five problems. Yes, I'd like you to do the challenge. And it says on the back, um, uh, number three, Brad keeps championship balls on a rack as shown in the picture of Brad's baseball's storeroom. So I'm gonna include that in your assignment for math. So just pull that up so you can take a look at that picture. That's the picture that you're going to need. Okay, and I will check in on you later.
Great job.